allow anything to, to distract my mind from presenting this evening as the Lord has instructed. We're going to have a great time this evening in the class. Right. Let me just kind of get everything together. We get in there. We get in there. This is this is the link for this evening's class. It's going to be freely available. I'm making this evening's class available online as well, so you have access to it. Please check the link, and you could share that link this evening if you are able to do so for this evening's session. This evening, we're talking about the principles of inspiration. It's very important um, this evening's class, the principles of inspiration. There are so many new changes that are going on around the, the UK and, and the globe, to be quite honest. So much is happening and, and there are so many updates. Um, your phones are asking you for updates and, and they're not working if you don't update them because of all the changes that are happening. So even our computers have to be updated with new information and, and stuff like that. So it's a bit challenging in the next couple of coming weeks, you find yourself challenged with a lot of updates. So, so be prepared for them. <laughs> updates are good. How many of you know that updates are good? It's good to be updated. My God, your excellency, Reverend Bright, you don't even know how happy I am to see you. I am, I'm smiling from cheek to cheek. You don't even know how excited we are. We missed you badly, greatly. I, I saw the photos and, and everything, but, but we sincerely missed you at First Lady Patient. So I am very happy. Let me, don't worry, my, my computer will cooperate at, at, its, at its own pace today, but it's all right, we will get there. From the beginning, all right. All right, how many of you can see my screen? Are we good to go? All is in order, can you see my screen? All right, let's do this. Principles of inspiration. And today I want to talk about being inspired, how to become inspired, and, and some of the important principles for inspiration. Are you ready to be inspired? That's an important question. A lot of us are doing so many things and the things that we do demand inspiration. They demand that we are, are 
prepared and, and excited and, and stimulated and stirred up for what we're going to be doing. So I want to share with you the process. What is inspiration? What really is, is that word inspiration? And I want to not just break it down, but I also want to inspire you this evening. I want you to become inspired. As a matter of fact, I, I, I have one of my, my mentors that use, you're titillated, you're, you're just excited. You're, you're overjoyed with enthusiasm. So what is inspiration? Inspiration, the process of being mentally stimulated to do, feel, or experience. I, I want to say that again. The process of being mentally stimulated to do, feel, or experience. It's, a, it's about mental stimulation it, it is inspiration you know there I, I i said to my wife while we were putting this presentation together a lot of individuals teach of things that inspire you that's okay it's okay to know what inspires you how to be inspired that's okay but what is inspiration inspiration is a, the process of being mentally stimulated. So the most important thing you need to know is it starts with the mind. How many of you get what I'm saying? It starts with the mind. It's a process that starts with the mind. Results of inspiration. Now here's an interesting thing. The results of inspiration is what a lot of individuals talk about. The results of inspiration is an idea. An idea. That is the result. It is an idea. And that idea can come from a person, a place, an experience, or a thing. All right? The idea that comes is going to come from a person, a place, an experience, or a thing. So let's see me and the Golden Eagle were talking and we talked about COVID and, and what is happening. And as a result of our conversation, I we got an idea. We were inspired. The conversation inspired us. And the inspiration gave us an idea, the glass of steel. So an idea comes from a person, conversation, dialoguing, discussion, discussing. But then we also have a place. How many of you have ever been someplace and, and you saw something? Olukoya is an architect. And, and I can't wait to travel with, with, with Olukoya, His Excellency, because we're going to see some architecture in some places that, oh my goodness, they're going to stimulate him because he's already an architect. But when you go places and see things, you become stimulated. You become, you become challenged, encouraged, and motivated as well when you go places. But then experiences. Sometimes we have experiences that stimulate us as well. All types of experiences. I mean, it could be a good experience. And when you have a good experience, you are excited. You, you, are, you want to, to go forward. You want to, to press in. You, you want to play your part when you have a good experience. But also, you can also have bad experiences. How many of you know sometimes bad experiences create inspiration as well? So inspiration is not a positive word or a negative word. Are, are you hearing me? It is, just, it is just a fact of stimulation. Inspiration is a fact based on stimulation, mentally positive or negative. And then there's a thing. Some things inspire us. How many of you have ever been sitting down and the idea dropped out of the sky? It didn't come from somebody. It didn't come from a place. It didn't come from a person, but it just came. That 
thing. It just it just came to you, and 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 it just it just inspire you. I also, as a Christian and as a man of God, we say inspiration comes from the Holy Spirit. How many of you are with me? Sometimes you're sat and and quietly. The Holy Spirit brings something to your thoughts and, and he inspires you to do something, to, to, to make that phone call, to send that email, to, 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 to visit that place or person. So you get inspiration from things or, or, or from, from your, your divine connection. If you're a Christian, you, your divine connection to our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, he gives us inspiration. And when you get inspiration, what happens? You get a desire. You get a desire. So the Holy Spirit inspired us to, 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 to start the class of steel. And we got the desire to do it. Oh, I want to do this. So persons inspire you. The people that, that come alongside of you, the people that, that join your vision and they align themselves with what you're doing, they inspire you and they, they give you that desire to, to do it. You get a desire, an overwhelming excitement to do. It's all about the desire from a person, from a place. You get a desire from a place from an experience or from a thing that makes you want to do. A desire, which is a person, place, experience, or thing that makes you want to do. Whatever it is, makes you want to do. A desire to travel, it makes you want to get up and go. But then there's something else that is a very important part of this process of inspiration, a motivator. A motivator is a person, place, experience, or thing that makes you want to continue doing. You, 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 don't, just, you don't just now have a desire to do the, the idea that you have but you now have a motivating factor. That's important. If you don't have the third element, element which is a motivator, then the desire will die, will die. How many of you know what I'm saying? If, if, if you don't have a motivating factor for your desire, it will die. And then when your desire for something dies, guess what happens? The idea that you had or the idea that was a part of what it brought the desire, it dies as well. How many of you know faith without works is dead? How many of you know that, that if God gives you a vision to do something and, and you, you, you lose the desire to do that thing, eventually it will, it will, you, will, you will fade away? Why? Because you no longer have the motivation to do that thing, which was in your spirit or in your heart to do. I want to um, pause just briefly to acknowledge the person of His Excellency Lali Patricia, who is my brother and friend um, from India, and he resides in Canada. Lalik, I just want to quickly introduce, uh, welcome you to the class. I'm not going to bring you on at this moment while we're teaching, but I just want to welcome you to the class this evening, Lalik Patrika, from out of the U.S., um, here in the class with us this evening. You're welcome. Uh, we have some exciting things that we will share with you in the coming days. Uh, very welcome to the class of Steve. So, so you need that motivator that is going to keep you going when you, you, don't, you don't know what to do, but you continue to grow, you continue to mature, you continue to develop. Motivators are very important, and I don't want you to take lightly motivators. Anything that you're doing, always have a motivation team, a team that motivates you. Even if it is a place, sometimes you, you go someplace to, to build up your desire. 
to continue to keep you excited about what you're doing. You just go that place and sit down yourself quietly. It's a thing. How many of you know that um, I'm an ice cream person? I love ice cream. <laughs> Jenny, stop that, Jenny. I know you love ice cream. I see your hand going up first. <laughs> but but, we, but how many of you know that, that there are some things that we like that they, they stimulate our thinking. They excite us about what we're doing. When I go to visit Reverend Bright, Reverend Bright knows that if he carries me for ice cream and we sit down together, we're going to have very stimulating conversations over ice cream. Come on, Reverend Bright. You, you all know what I'm talking about. You all have these foods that you enjoy. How many of you know that, that sometimes you have some people that they stimulate you, they excite you. When you talk about them with your vision, they make your vision come alive and, and they excite you with passion. Because why? They are your motivators. Those are the persons that are key to keeping your ideas alive and building. Amen? When inspired, my wife chose this, um, this, this little image of taking the bull by the horns. Come on, somebody. I, I, wanna, I wanna teach you about inspiration and I wanna give you the idea of taking a bull by the horns. Look at the size of the bull, the power of a bull. But when you become inspired, something happens. You look at that bull and you decide, I can take on that bull. How many of you have got a raging bull of an idea, a raging bull of a project, a raging bull of a plan, a raging bull of a vision, but you gotta, you want inspiration to make you take it by the horns. Wave at me. I can see you. Wave at me if that's you, because I can see you in the class of steel. Come on. This evening, the class of steel is, is going to equip you with the power to take the bull by the horns. Get ready to take the bull by the horns. When you are inspired, you become purposeful. A lot of individuals do not operate with purpose. They operate staccata. I use the word staccata to mean they operate willy-nilly. Whatever happens, come to say, come to say. They're having classes on Monday, and on Monday and on Tuesday, on Wednesdays and Friday. But on Monday, they feel good, so they give you a good class. But on Wednesday, they don't feel good, so they don't show up. Come on, somebody. Do you get what I'm talking about? So they don't show up. They're staccato. They don't operate with purpose. They don't operate with precision. They don't operate with timing. Why? Because they're not purposeful. Because they're not so inspired. When you are inspired, you are purposeful. If you want to take the bull by the horns, you've got to operate with purpose. Don't step into the bull ring to take the bull by the horns and you are not purposeful. Write that down. I must be purposeful to address the challenges that I'm going to face. I must be purposeful to address those things that are within my vision. You must operate with purpose. Do not be willy-nilly. Know what you are going to do. Have a, a purpose and a plan of how you're going to do it and stay focused. How many of you are with me? Come on, wave at me. I, I can see you. I can see you. Wave at me. Thank you. Active. Now, come on, somebody. Do you think that the bull is going to stay in the ring and allow you to grab him by his horns? Come on, somebody. Do you think the bull is going to just shake his head and say, here are my horns. You can have them. I want to challenge you in the class of steel. Your vision is not going to sit and play willy-nilly with you. The, the vision that you want to, to control and, and manage those things that God has given to you, they're not going to roll over and play dead and let you just come and manage them. They're going to be active. They're moving pieces. You've got to be active. Oh, you sit down and, so why didn't you do class of steel on Wednesday? Oh, I was waiting for somebody to call me and nobody called me. Hey, somebody, you got to be active. You got to get up and go and do it. 
Why is my vision not coming together? Why am I not getting this done? I have some people in the class so still that I celebrate them. Why? You see them in darkness, persons like, like Alice and, and other persons in different parts of Africa. Why? Because they don't have electricity sometimes because where the signal is and sometimes electricity go off on some of my African brothers. But what? They're actively involved in making sure that they're here. Even if you don't see them, why? because they want to be purposeful and they're actively involved in being dear so they can be a part of the class. You got to be taking the bull by the horns. Come on, somebody. You have to elevate your status and your thinking. You're not going to take the bull by the horns if you're not prepared to elevate your status. The bull is not your friend. Are you hearing me? The bull wants to get out of that ring. Come on, look at it. But look at that man just holding the bull by the horns. That's how your project is. That's how what you want to, that's how raising your children is. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to parents. That's how raising your children is. Your children are not going to sit there and say, oh, daddy, I'm going to do exactly what you say, exactly the way you want me to do it. No, they're going to challenge you. That's, the, that's their role as they grow up. But you've got to be in a position to know how to manage these things. Are you with me? You've got to be elevating your status. I am in charge here. Do you know who is in charge? I am in charge. When you step into that bull ring with the ring, come on, Golden Eagle. When you step into to that environment, you walk with an elevated status. I'm not talking about arrogance. You don't go into a bull ring and be arrogant. The bull isn't going to be playing with you. Arrogance is not going to win the bullfight. Come on, somebody. You got to be elevated. Why? Because you are exercising authority. How many of you know you've got to have a burst of energy? A lot of people don't have energy bursts. Oh, I'm so tired today. Oh, oh I don't have the passion for the class. I, I have so many problems. If you know the troubles I'm going through, if you know the difficulties, uh, but you can't walk into to a bull ring and 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 the, and the fights of life and the challenges of life and, and not have a burst of energy. The fights of life will knock you out. Come on, somebody! They will knock you out if you're not an eagle. They will knock you out if you're not positioning yourself with authority. The challenges of life are not waiting for you to come and make them look like pushovers. How many of you get what I'm saying? You want to be a success. You want to be a champion. Do you think champions sleep when others are, are sleeping? Champions are up practicing. Why? Because they know they got to practice. They know they got to put in their homework. How many of you get what I'm saying to you? So you've got to got bursts of energy. You have to be aware of enlarged possibilities. What do I mean by enlarged possibilities? You've got to be aware that taking the bull by the horns is possible. Wave your hand at me if you get if you get what I'm saying. It's possible. It's possible. Come on, somebody. I said it's possible. How do I know it's possible? Because I've seen others do it. And I can assure you. If I sit under a bullfighter teaching me how to do it, I promise you I will jump into that bullfighting ring. I am one of those persons. I'm sorry, but I am one of those persons. I will jump into that bullfighting ring and I will give it my best shot. I will prepare myself for a couple of wounds. How many of you get what I'm saying? I'll prepare myself that I might get hurt. I might get injured. Come on, somebody. The fights of life demand that you've got to be prepared for whatever it takes. You've got to be prepared for whatever it takes. You're going to lose. You're going to lose some. You're going to lose some blood. You might lose some blood. A lot of you should go and watch a bull fight and, and understand what life is going to throw at you. Because life is not going to throw you a rollover and play dead situation that you can just go and take it over. You got to fight. 
Even the next breath you take, you've got to fight to take it. You've got to breathe in. If you don't breathe in and you recite, and you decide, oh, I'm going to relax. I don't want to breathe in. I'm too tired. I can't be asked. If you don't breathe in, your lungs are going to start a battle with you. Your lungs are going to start fighting. Take that breath. Take that breath. Take that breath. Why? Because every single facet of creation has to fight. Every facet of creation. You are made up with organs that fight for everything that it gets. Competing. So you must be aware of enlarged possibilities. New perception. If you do not have the vision to recognize that fighting a bull is real, if, if nobody doesn't give you the perception, you will not make it. Are you hearing me? Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? You need a new perception, a new way of perceiving things. Because you see, you're seeing a 900-pound bull. And you're thinking, my God, he's 900 pounds, but I'm only, uh, my God, I'm only 150 pounds, 160 pounds. How am I ever going to turn down a 900 pound bull? But I want to tell you something. If you take a bull by the horns and you twist his horns, his head is all you need to twist. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about bullfighting. You just need to grab a hold of the, those horns. And once you grab a hold of those horns and you keep your feet on the ground, that bull is subject to you. I don't care how big he is. Once you twist his head, you get that head twisted far enough, that bull is going to lay down. Because, you, because why? You took him by the horns. You were not intimidated by his size. You were not intimidated about how big he is. You were intimidated with the fact that you know you just got to get those horns in your hands and don't let go of them. Because the only thing that bull has over you is those two big horns and his power. But once you grab those horns, come on, somebody. I'm talking to you today because life, life is going to show you situations that you've got to grab them by the horns. Just grab a hold of the horns. How many of you have ever heard the pastor say, get, get hold of the horns of the altar? Have you ever heard that saying before? You need to get a hold of the horns of the altar. What was he trying to say? He was trying to say that the horns of the altar is where your strength is going to be. you got to grab a hold of the horns. You can't just walk around the altar. You can't just walk around the circle. You've got to exercise some dominion and some authority and grab the altar to bite the horns. Come on, somebody. I'm not preaching today, but my God, I'm inspired. I'm inspired because I didn't sleep last night. I was up all night working on this message for you. Why? Because I'm going to give it to you good. Come on, somebody. Life is not going to play games with you. You got to be serious, committed, challenging. You've got to be empowered. You've got to be empowered. Now listen to this. When inspired, you need to be empowered. Let me say what that means. A lot of people operate as lone rangers without authority, organizations without registration, um, they go and they speak on the behalf of a person without permission. They go and they do things and they're not authorized to do them. You've got to be empowered. If you are not empowered, then you don't have the ability and the capacity to fulfill taking the bull by the horns. You've got to do your, your legal things. And, and sometimes legal things take years. It takes a long time. It takes commitment and dedication and waiting in a line. But you've got to wait until you are empowered. Even as Christians, now I know this is, is not a Christian forum or a Christian group that I'm, I'm just talking to Christians, but I want you to understand as Christians, the Bible even says, wait until ye be endued with power from on high. 
You've got to wait to be empowered. And after that, when you are empowered, then you now have the ability. Come on, somebody, wave at me if I'm talking right. Wave at me if I'm talking right. I want to see your hands. Because a lot of individuals operate and they do not have the authority to operate. And they cause problems. If you do not operate with the right protocols, you cause problems, you cause embarrassment, you cause shame. If you step into the bull ring and you did not recognize that you were not on the schedule to get into the ring, what's going to happen? You're going to cause chaos. And the bull is going to kill somebody. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Because only one person gets in the bull ring at a time. Why? Because all eyes are on that person to protect that person. All eyes are on that person to make sure the bull does not kill that person. How many of you are with me what I'm saying? You don't get into the bull ring and you're not empowered. You've got to be empowered. I'll tell you a little bit more about Lalit and, my, and myself. He's one of the most powerful men that you will ever meet. I promise you. I promise you. Lalit Patrick, who is in the class of steel and, 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 and my good brother, he is one of the most powerful men I have met. He will find you out. He will figure you out. Because he's powerful. He's empowered to do that. You need to be capable. Don't get into the bullfighting ring if you're not capable. Don't, don't, don't fly into the bull's face if you're not capable. Get capable. Get capable. Hey, somebody. My goodness, I, I don't know if you... My God, I see Olukoya waving his hand. Olukoya and, 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 and Golden Eagle, and, and I see my, my, my chief of protocol, Donald Yours, there waving their hand. You got to be capable. Don't think you can stand up against some warriors and fly into their faces and fight battles. You've got to be a capable fighter. Come on, somebody. Life is not going to sit down and make you think, oh, I'm just going to take you over. You got to be capable. Prove your capability. Equip yourself. Don't just jump into the, the bullfighting ring and did not get your capability in order. A lot of people want to get into marriages and they don't get counseling. A lot of people want to get businesses and they don't want business advisors. A lot of people want to get into to organizations and teaching and they don't have mentors. You've got to become capable. Ah, oh, but you need to be driven. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You got to be driven. You've got to be driven. You, you've got to have drive. When you become inspired, you are driven. My God. And, and, you, and you captivate an audience. It's like, it's like Hussein Bolt, the athlete. When he gets into a race, come on, somebody. Everybody's on the edge of their seat. Everybody's watching. Everybody's positioned. Why? Because, because they see a man that is driven with support. He is driven with power. And as soon as the bell goes off, as soon as that gun fires, he is driven. Driven with excitement. Driven with energy. Everybody, go on who say go. Go, you say go. Go, you say go. I've got some people I want to tell you. I've got some powerful people in the class of steel that are behind me and some powerful people around the world that you do not see. But I want to tell you something. When those folks give me one phone call and say, my God, Dr. Steele, you did well. My God, they pour gasoline inside of my tank. Persons that want to come and, and try to stop or hinder or push back, they don't have the capacity or the ability. Why? Because I'm driven. I'm driven. The persons who are watching you, they trust you, they respect you. They expect you to, to, promote, the, to promote the cause. Golden Eagle, you know what I'm talking about. 
You've been a pastor and, and didn't get tithes and offering, and you still showed up next Sunday. You still showed up when nobody showed up. Sometimes you're in church, sometimes and you're two or three persons. But what have you what have you got to do? You are you are driven, you are inspired, you are capable, you are competent, you are purposeful, and all of these tenants keep you going. You are limitless. When you're inspired, you become limitless. Nobody could box you in. My God, you got to say that. I want you to wave your hand at me and say, I will never be limited from today. Say that with me. I will not be limited. I want to tell you something. The world has over 7 billion people, and I don't care how many no's I have to pass through before I get the yes I want, but I am limitless in my approach to fulfill the vision that I have. Are you limitless? Are you inspired and are you limitless? You've got to be limitless. You've got to see past one person that thinks they are great. You've got to see there's somebody greater. There is always somebody greater. It doesn't matter how great the person that left you or, or abandoned you or turned their backs on you or said no to you. It really doesn't matter how great that person is. There is always somebody greater that's going to pick you up and say, I will not leave you. I will support you and I will stand by you. You've got to make sure you're limitless. And guess what? When you're limitless, you become confident. Come on, somebody. As soon as you get rid of the limits, your confidence increases. You become more confident. You learn the people that you were trying to convince about your vision are not worth it. Hey, I'm going to say that again because a lot of you might not have heard what I just said. So I'm going to say it again. I said it, it, it teaches you that the people who are not confident in your vision is, are not worth convincing. Sometimes you got to recognize that you, you limit yourself when you try to convince one or two persons. But you got to rise to the occasion and become what? Limitless and increase your confidence. A lot of great people had people that, that their, 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 their visions died because they limited themselves to the person they thought was the greatest person that was going to help them. A lot of great people that were stood by you, sometimes those people die. What are you going to do when those people die? Everybody's going to die someday. Are you gonna lose your are you gonna lose your confidence when those people that were so close to you go to their maker? They have finished their task. The reason why you are still here is because your task is not completed. But are you gonna roll over and die because they were the greatest thing that happened to you since sliced bread? Come on, somebody, wave at me, wave! I want to see some interaction in the class. I want you to be inspired. That's what the class of steel is about. Become limitless. A lot of folks are, are in Africa sitting down and because one family friend that went over to, to the US or to the UK has abandoned them or in Canada has abandoned them, they give up hope. Are you kidding me? There are millions of people in Africa. There are millions of people in the USA. There are millions of people in the UK. There are millions of people in Asia. There are millions of people all over the world. Don't limit yourself. Don't lose your confidence because of that one you thought was going to be the golden child. There is not one golden child. All are golden. Every single child of God is golden. You just have to find the gold in them. Be creative. You've got to be creative. When you become inspired, you're creative. Oh, this didn't work, so I will try this. Hey, somebody, wave at me if you get what I'm saying. We talked about getting over disappointment the last time. You know how you get over disappointment? You got to be creative. Oh, this didn't work, so I'll try this. 
Oh, this person was was supposed to be to be the, the golden child, and they're not the golden child. So I'll try this one. Hey, somebody, you you gotta be creative. If you're not creative, you are not going to keep inspired because when creativity dies, inspiration goes. You've got to be willing to learn. You've got to be willing to learn. A lot of individuals don't want to study. Even the Bible says study to show yourselves approved. The workman that rightly divideth the word of truth that needeth not be ashamed. Are you with me? Whatever you're doing in life, you need to, you need to be willing to learn. A lot of folks don't want to sit down and be taught. They just want to hear the first paragraph and then they want to run away and think they know the whole book. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to say that again. That felt good saying it. A lot of folks want the first paragraph of your book and then they and then they want to, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. The first lady just came and told me, calm down. Those in the class will still know what I'm saying. She told me I'm a little bit too passionate, so I'm calming down. Sorry for shouting with so much excitement. Please forgive me. She just walked into the office and she did like this. You've got to be willing to learn. A lot of folks are not willing to learn. They're not willing to listen to teachers. I, I am willing to learn how to be calm because I have too much energy. So I just have to learn to manage it. But are you with me? We must be willing to learn and we must be humble. Learning takes humility. It doesn't matter who, how small or how great the person that is trying to teach you, learning takes humility. I sit in classes all the time. I have to because I'm a student of knowledge. I want to know, I want to learn. A lot of you, how many of you think I'm a great teacher? How many of you think I'm okay? How many of you, but guess what? But guess what? Guess what? I'm a better student. I get more pleasure sitting down and learning than I, well, I was gonna say than I get from, from teaching. Thank you, my darling. My, my wife is seeing me passionate and she's seeing me. Thank you, my darling. Come on, somebody, you gotta celebrate the first lady. Come on, you've got to celebrate your partner and companion that watches over you. I'm not gonna be preaching the class of steel and not celebrating the boss behind me who watches over me, who guides and instructs me and keeps me going. I gotta celebrate her. Give your partner a hand if they're worthy of a hand. Come on, celebrate your companions on the journey. Thank you, darling. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise God. <clears throat> wellness. Wellness is important. You need to keep well. When you're inspired, all is well. How many of you here individuals saying that? How are you doing, bro? Oh, all is well. All is well, meaning you're inspired and all of these other things that I just talked to you about are in order. Yes? You need to be more connected. If you want to build a global empire, if you want your vision to reach its full potential, you need to be more connected. Connectivity makes that happen. That's how it happens, by connectivity. Meeting others, sharing the vision, getting inspired, having great leaders and great teachers. And then the most important thing, is you need to be attuned. You need to always be attuned. Don't ever step out of being attuned. You have to keep tuning what you're doing. Always. Always tuning it. How many of you know when you've got a car engine, you got to keep tuning it? Your project, what you're doing, keep tuning it. Keep tweaking it. Always be attuned. Let me go on because I spent a lot of time on that. But I wanted you to understand that when we create these PowerPoints is because those points are subjects in themselves, each of them. Prepare for inspiration. 
prepare our preparation for inspiration. Prepare the ground of your understanding. This is interesting. This is very interesting. I decided to put this slide in here because understanding just like inspiration is a process. Understanding is a process. Are you with me? If you are not prepared for understanding, then you will not understand. If you're not prepared for understanding. So what do I mean by that? Open your listening, thinking, and emotions to receive. So why are you, why are you listening to what I'm saying? Because you want to become inspired. So you open your listening to hear where it's going. You're thinking while you're listening, you're thinking about your church, your business, your vision, your goal, and you're seeing if they line up. You're with me because you're thinking. And your emotions, how does this make me feel? How many of you know folks that there's some folks that sometimes you see them in church and you sit next to them and you can hear them. Oh, oh, he, he this message again. Oh, uh, he preached that message the last time. Oh, oh, this is so boring. Oh God, when is he going to get to the good point? Oh, and you get to the place where you, 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 you your emotions are no longer there. You're turned off. If you get turned off in the process of understanding, you will not understand. You will miss something very important because you got turned off in the process. Are you with me? Then it says, approve your mentor. If you do not approve your mentor and your mentor is the place, the person, the environment, the thing, those are your mentors. Are you with me? The place you are mentors you. If you go to, if you go to a country, and I, I want to pardon me for using this phrase, please do. But as a matter of fact, I will not use it. You don't have to pardon me because I did not use it, so I will not use it. But there are some terms that are used based on places people visit that turn you off. So when you go to that place, you will not be inspired because you have already turned off your mentor, which is the place. Are you with me? It's almost like saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Hey, what are you talking about? Can anything good come out of Africa? Hey, can anything good come out of Nigeria? Hey. If you do not approve your mentors, if you do not approve them mentally, then you will not understand the culture, the dynamics, the advice, the support, the power that exists within that, that, that thing or person. You see, a lot of persons don't recognize this. When you find a diamond, a diamond is a rock that does not look very attractive. But if you do not know what you found and approve what you have found in its rough stage, then you will just throw it away. How many of you get what I'm saying? If you see something and you don't approve it, you will get rid of it. Mentally, you look at a, a little rock and says, oh, what is this piece of rock? Hey, it's foolishness. I don't approve this. It's no value. Approve the place. Approve the experience. Approve the thing. They must be met with your mental approvement. Mentally. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about your mind. Mentally. Approve the process. 
If you do not approve the process, you will not start it because you will think it's going to take too long. We are the proud owners of an organization. But the process of registration and approval takes long. A lot of people don't have the patience for the process. They want quick fixes. They want it now, immediately. But you have to approve the process. And then the final point on this, which is, non, which is, is not exhausted by no means, but allow your understanding to be comfortable. Did you hear me? You have to allow what you just understood to rest comfortably with you. Don't be annoyed. Don't be angry anymore. I've been to, to places in Guyana. And I've sat with those. I, I have friends who are the Oh My Gold Mines in, in Guyana. Um, they're friends of mine, personal friends. And I went to the Oh My Gold Mine, I remember. And I went about their house in Guyana. They're up there. They're very powerful people. As a matter of fact, the Canadians have taken over the Oh My Gold Mines. I'm very much aware. But those people are powerful people and very wealthy. But when I step out of their doors and I go to minister to individuals, their persons to the, the floor of their house is the earth, the ground you're walking on, and the cups they bring that are their prize cups. They have dirt on them. But you want me to tell you this. I drink and honor them with so much love and compassion. So comfortably. Why? Because they are the people of God. They're the people that God has placed there. And whether I'm in the palace or whether I'm in, in those environments of the lowly and the humble, I know how to be comfortable. How many of you get what I'm saying? If you're not comfortable with an environment, you will disrespect and dishonor those that are honorable. Have you heard what I'm saying? And your understanding of, of those that, that might live in the villages or the highways or the byways might cause you to miss opportunities to arrive safely in the city because sometimes those in the villages own the city. Have you heard me? So you've got to be comfortable. And you've got to follow wholeheartedly. Do not do anything with half of your heart. If you're going to do anything, do it wholeheartedly. The time is now 10 minutes past nine. And my goodness, that is slide seven of 16 slides. How many of you would like me to give you two, more, two or three more slides and then close? Because I don't want to take up much more of your time but I'm going to give you a couple more slides and then I will close and we will do this on Wednesday. My wife is very creative. My wife says, darling, I want you to make this a series. So take your time and do it well. Are you there, First Lady? Can I hear you, First Lady? Are you there? Good evening, everyone. Yes, I am here. Uh -huh. So you're smiling because you recognize that I have to do this on Wednesday and Friday as well. On Friday? I think you can cover tonight and, and on Wednesday. I don't think you need to stretch it. I don't think it will stretch as far as Friday. But Thank it depends you. on how much you share. <laughs> Thank you, my adorable love. I appreciate you. Come on, celebrate the first You're Monday. welcome. Good night, everyone. <laughs> All right. So let's look at, I'm going to give you a couple more slides and then we will wrap up. Where can I get it? This is my wife's nice action. She's opening the cupboard. The cupboard is empty. Where can I get inspiration from? <laughs> There's an empty cupboard, so you need inspiration. Glad you asked. So she has the keys. She's running and bringing the keys to you. It's coming through the class of steel. She's coming with it. Get ready for inspiration, locations. 
So locations, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna run through this really quickly because we're now at slide number 11 of 16. So locations, mentors, learning new things, reflection and introspection, reading, music and lectures, the environment, places you visit, bookstores and libraries, research what others in your field are doing, research what you need to do. A lot of people spend so much time looking at how individuals are doing what they want to do that they never take the time to research how to do what they want to do for themselves. Are you with me? No great man is going to tell you his secret. He will tell you the surface, but you will never know his secret. So don't watch great men and what they do and think you will get it done. You will be fooling yourself. You need to equip yourself to know how to do what you want to do. Outside of your comfort zone. A lot of people, if you're comfortable in your comfort zone, you will not get inspiration very often. You will just remain with what you have, but will not expand it. A hobby. You need a hobby. Get a hobby. How many of you have a hobby? Something you love to do? Golfing, cricket, playing chess. You need a hobby because hobbies give you inspiration because you meet with like-minded people and you get inspired. And the final point that I'm going to make in closing this evening's class is good times. Good times. The final point is good times. A lot of individuals do not have good times. You don't know how to have a laugh. You don't know how to enjoy your life. You don't know how to celebrate great opportunities. You've got to enjoy it and have good times for going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Michael Steele, and you have just heard how to become inspired here in the class of Steele. I want to thank you so very much for that presentation, and I celebrate you. As a matter of fact, please allow me this evening to welcome His Excellency Lali Patrika, my great friend. Lali, please, I want to welcome you first to the class of steel. Introduce yourself, please. Let them know who you are. And equally, I just want you to give me your summary on this evening's class. You are a great leader, so I am sitting at your feet. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Lalit Pasricha. I'm from Indian background in Toronto, Canada with my wife and two sons. And uh, uh, Michael is a very great friend of mine, a brother to me. And uh, I'm so excited to be part of this uh, organization and uh, 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 learning from all of the great minds and the great souls. Thank you. Lali, tell us a little bit about who you are, if you don't mind, or if you would prefer to do that another time. I am comfortable to allow you to do that. The choice is yours. But please tell them who you are, because we want them to see that the class of steel is taking them somewhere, and we have people who are able to do that. So if you're comfortable to do that, Your Excellency, I will be pleased for you to do so. Well, uh... Uh, what should I say about myself? I'm uh, I'm a, a mechanical engineer basically, and uh, established in Canada. And uh, I don't know what to say. So, uh, pardon me for now. Maybe some other time. <laughs> I agree with you. Thank you so much. Come on, celebrate Lalik this evening. Let's celebrate him in the class of steel. We thank you so very much for being with us this evening. I love your humility. I love your person. And that's why we are great friends together. God bless you and, and thank you. I, I want yes, to, yeah. I, I want to ask you. the Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle, again, welcome back. And please share your thoughts on this evening's class. What are your thoughts about inspiration this evening? How was the class for you? <laughs> Um, 
Thank you, Your Excellency. I appreciate the, your thought and uh, your, your inspiration tonight. I actually miss the class. Uh, I miss the class, uh, but the inspiration of the class has still kept me for these two weeks. And uh, we know barrier in Nigeria is like uh, it's like going for a war, going for, just like what you said, just like uh, taking the bull by the horn. So while you are talking about it, I just saw myself. I took the bull by the horn two weeks ago. <laughs> and I came out victoriously, and uh, I'm excited. Myself and my wife and my family, we went, we traveled from my location to the next location of the Beria. It's about uh, 14 hours uh, journey. And uh, I traveled to the city. I came back as a, as a victor. And then I took the bull actually by the horn. And uh, what you teach, what you taught us tonight, was just a confirmation of what happened uh, last week and two and a week ago. So uh, the class is so inspiring. I mean, the inspiration of the class of three kept me going and uh, kept me, I mean, energizes us. I uh, energized us to face the challenges of, of all the process. I actually miss the class and uh, miss all you, uh, all of us. And uh, I think uh, I am back and I'm excited, I'm elated because I know God is up to something in this class. I, I, I know that uh, we will never be the same. I've seen God at work, I've seen him walking, and I've seen that God has packaged this, this uh, meeting for people like us. So your, your message tonight is, 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 is galvanizing men of great minds, uh, is pulling us together, bringing us together to achieve an idea whose time has come. I know that uh, the class of steel is an idea. The class of steel is a motivator. The class of steel is an inspiration. The class of steel is an empowerment. And then uh, we, cannot, we cannot be the same. And uh, I tell you, we cannot be the same. We will go places. I am happy that I'm here. I'm happy that I'm back. And uh, fortunately, I've, I've met with uh, our great, uh, a great mind, Patrick, by the, the, our guest for tonight, uh, I think uh, Lalit. I met with him tonight. I think uh, 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 the Bible says, he that walk with the wise shall be wise, and the companies of fools shall be destroyed. So I, I can't be in the midst of, the, of, of great men like you guys and not be great. I, th I thank you so much for being in the class of steel, being in the midst of great men. I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself becoming great because I can't eat from the great plate and not be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Dr. Steel, I, I appreciate you. I miss you. Thank you for, the, for your, your, your timely instruction. You are, you are a mentor indeed. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you for us. First lady, you are doing a great job. I miss all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. We'll see you again, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. You're, you're very welcome. God, God bless you. It's good, it's good to have you back, uh, Golden Eagle. I want to ask Her Excellency Jenny Trahane out of the beautiful island of Barbados. Uh, your Excellency, how was this evening's message for you? And what is your take on this evening's word? Good evening, His Excellency. It's good to see you. And you. Uh, it's been an inspirational um, uh, session. Um, I think what really um, gripped me was not fearing the process um, because it's the process that will build character. And, um, and that was something that really uh, many times we, we become, we, we lose our inspiration because we're fearful of the process. But if we can, if we can persevere to the end, the reward is great. And uh, and thank you for inspiring us, for motivating us. Um, I want you to know that we're all got your back, and uh, and we're 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 batting for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much. Uh, You're welcome, Jenny. What's the weather like in Barbados today? How is it? You know what? Oh, in England, it's, it's cold. In Nigeria, we, we have so many brothers that um, represented in the class of steel. How is it in Barbados? Oh, it's been beautiful. 
It's about 80 degrees. The beautiful trade winds are blowing and it's cool and lovely. It's just so nice. You got to get back here soon. <laughs> <laughs> You're inspiring me, Jenny. You're inspiring me. Come on, let's celebrate Her Excellency, Jenny Tree. God bless you, Your Excellency. A pleasure to have you in the class always. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, excuse me. I want to ask uh, Her Excellency uh, Doreen, Your Excellency Doreen. Um, good evening. Doreen is is out of Uganda, but she's now based in Congo. So we celebrate Congo this evening as well in the class of Steel. Doreen, how are you doing, and how was the class for you this evening? Yeah. Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening to you all, my brothers and sisters. I greet you from Kinshasa. Ah, well, the class of steel today has been great. And um, uh, inspiration is what actually drives me in this country. You are just talking about what I usually do because I'm all by myself and myself with the class of steel to encourage myself. So um, the environment really contributes a lot for you to be driven. So you always have to create uh, an environment for yourself to drive your vision. And so all, and, and all the elements of wellness and you, you don't allow anything that comes that maybe bad, bad uh, information, bad news. You always have to be positive, always, always. So for you to, to be able to achieve what you have set yourself to do. So the class of steel tonight is about really inspiring yourself in everything that you're, you, you are heading. At times you may not even have motivators, you just have yourself. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. You have really, uh, you're, it's well presented and well spoken. Thank you, Dr. Michael Steele, thanks. You're very, you're thanks. very, you're very welcome. And thank you so very much. Come on, let's celebrate. Uh, Congo and Uganda. God bless you. Uh, Your Excellency uh, Donald Ewers, our Chief of Protocol. Your Excellency, please, how was the class for you? Uh, uh, what, what is your take on this evening's class? Yes, a pleasant good evening, Your Excellency, Dr. Steele, and to all the ambassadors. And um, my thought on tonight is that stands out is grabbing the bull by the horn and in difficult situation to be confident, uh, in difficult situation to be problem solving and um, without delay, without complain, without blaming others. And I say grabbing the bull by, that's what really Tekka told me, you uh, put a, a different light a different avenue, a different way of looking at life and in the challenges that we go through in life, uh, rather in ministry, rather in at your work, in your secular job, whether in your homes, with your children, you have to have make decision making, whether it is positive, whether it is negative, grab it by its hand. My father died at the age of 82. And one of the things he taught me as a young man growing up, he said, there's no such word as I can't. We were brought up in a very militant way with my father. And he said, there's no such word as I, I can't. So you have to be out there, grab the bull by the horn and get on with it. Bless you, sir. Thank you so very much for that, Your Excellency. Uh, Donald Ewers, thank you for that contribution. Uh, Reverend Daniel Sapuru, would you share your thoughts this evening? Reverend Daniel is our daddy in the class of steel. He's the elder amongst us. So we, 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 we li listen to, to what he has gleaned from this evening's class. And Reverend, uh, Reverend Daniel is based in, he's in Nigeria. Go for us, Reverend Daniel. Thank you very much for, for the lecture. And uh, I want to equally greet all the excellencies in the house and uh, those who attended this class. 
I want to believe that um, we will not be the same. Um, the first thing I, I would say here is that I am inspired. <laughs> I am fully inspired. And um, because I am inspired and because I have a purpose, I will surely grab the bull by the horns. <laughs> yes, uh, grabbing the bull by the horns uh, is what um, that has inspired me tonight. That um, I, 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 am, I, I, I won't only have a purpose, I will be very active and uh, do everything to go into um, what uh, that purpose is. So the driving force is there. It is me grabbing um, the bull by the horn that matters. So I want to say thank you tonight. Obviously, I am inspired. You have inspired me and I will go for this inspiration that the Lord has given tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so very much, Reverend Dio. The Lord, the Lord bless you. Um, I want to, I, I know Florence is in Uganda. Um, Florence, uh, would you like to share your, your thoughts on this evening's class? Uh, from Uganda. Florence is in from Uganda. Are you are you with us, uh, Florence, this evening? You're you're able to unmute. Okay. Don't, don't seem to, to be able to connect with Florence. But I want to, in closing, I want to thank you so very much for being in the class this evening. And I want to uh, extend a, a, a blessing upon you, the blessing of the Lord be upon you, your family, and all that you're doing. And in the midst of whatever happens, always remember, no matter what happens, stay true to your vision. Stay true to your, your purpose and your focus and be confident, be confident that God will bring you true. I'm Dr. Michael Steele and this is the class of Steele. Thank you so very much for listening in this evening. Good night and God bless you. For those who are in our social media platform on YouTube, on Facebook and on our LinkedIn family, we appreciate you and we invite you to join us on Wednesday at the same time, 8 p.m. GMT, where we will conclude this session on being inspired, the principles of inspiration. Good night on behalf of my wife, Jeannie Steele, who is here with us, and myself, the management team of the class of Steele. Good night and God bless you.